the distinct shape of the Vulcan bomber, once the backbone of Britain's airborne nuclear deterrent. Yet it began as a one-third scale aircraft, the Avro 707, built to test and refine the Delta Wing concept. Only five were built. One crashed, one was broken up, and two live in museums in Manchester, England and Victoria, Australia. Only one Avro 707C was built, designed as a two-seat side-by-side -side training aircraft for Delta Wing pilots. It was also one of the first fly-by-wire aircraft. So why has this unique and important aircraft been taken off display at the museum? It needs mending. This is the Conservation Centre at the RAF Museum at Cosford, where engineers work on restoring and preserving our aviation heritage. Think for a minute of the range of materials they are faced with repairing. Everything from old leather to corroded metal, and not just any metal, but alloys. And alloys with a history. Well, what we have here is the leg off the Avro 707C. Um, typically before we do any aircraft movements, we always uh, will inspect the leg, especially when we're going to fit a towing bar. And unfortunately, when we went to move it last time, we found that the leg was cracked. The problem is now we know it's an aluminium alloy. Uh, the trouble is we don't know what it's alloyed with and there's certain materials like magnesium in it. If, if we wanted to weld the joint up to um, put some strength back into the leg, we may have issues. So really we approached um, Heidi and asked if um, there's any way she could help and that's what we're doing here today. The scientists responsible for shedding light on the mysterious alloy are Emily Smith and Michael Fay from the University of Nottingham. After documenting the damaged leg, they set about sampling from the cleanest part of the crack. We think it might have magnesium in it. What would happen if it did have magnesium in it and you welded it? Well, the worst case scenario, explosion. But I suppose with magnesium in there, some sort of a chemical reaction, possibly a fire. So that's why we don't want to weld really until we know what's it, what it's made from. Okay, and I mean obviously we're looking for magnesium, but what other information do you think the analysis might give you? Well, well typically we're just straight engineers, aircraft engineers, the majority of us in here, so we know it's aluminium. It, for us it's interesting to find out what the alloys, being other metals and added to the aluminium to form the alloys here. Yeah. As well as taking samples of the alloy, the team now has to sample the different layers of paint, so any contamination from these materials can be discounted from the analysis. They even bag up the drill tip so this can be identified too. Once everything is bagged up, we're ready to find out what our mystery alloy is really made of. Michael and Emily plan to use two techniques. X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy, or XPS, and scanning electron microscopy, SEM. Both help us to identify the elements in the Avro leg, but also why it cracked. So we're going to look at the XPS data that we've produced from the flake of metal that we've drilled out of the leg of the Avro. Um, what we've done to it is use one of these instruments, uh, which is XPS, X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy, um, we're firing x-rays at the sample and collecting the electrons that come out. XPS is very surface sensitive and that can be both a, a strength and a weakness of the technique. Um, if you're looking for something on the very top surface like an oxidation layer or a corrosion layer, uh, you're very, very sensitive to that. It, it looks at the top 10 nanometers or so of the surface. But if you want to look at the bulk, it's limited because you have to get rid of that stuff on top. You've got to somehow cross-section it and not let anything else land on top of it before you analyze it. So we've put the sample into the airlock and once it's pumped down, we are going to transfer into the main analysis chamber, which is this section here. Um, and this has an aluminium K-alpha X-ray source, which is this thing here. This is mostly space, but it has a monochromating quartz crystal in it, so it's picking out one very pure energy of X-ray. So we know what energy of X-ray we're going to put in. And then this is collecting the electrons we excite out of the sample. So the sample sits in the middle, 
notice everything's kind of pointing at it because it's going to get harassed by either um, x-rays or argon ions or whatever we want to throw at it and then we collect what's excited out with this thing here which is called a hemispherical analyzer and we count the electrons at each energy and that tells us what atom the electrons have come out from. So this is the energy range, this is how fast your electrons are going and this is the intensity at the side. And where we've got a big sharp peak here, uh, it's a particular atom emitting electrons of a certain energy. So we've got carbon here, carbon 1s electrons being emitted here, oxygen 1s there, uh, the 1s just refers to the orbital in the atom. What I'd expect to see on a sample from an aluminium aircraft is probably some aluminium and there's not a great deal of evidence of that within this spectrum. Uh, we are very surface sensitive. What I am seeing is a big zinc peak. So based on that I would say probably the zinc has segregated up to the surface of um, the granules of metal that we drilled out, um, which is probably why it was quite brittle. So not enough magnesium to cause problems when welding, and the surface tells us why it might have failed. This is an SEM stub with a sticky carbon tab on it and this is what we're using to load the very small bits of uh, the sample scraping we got from the crack. Uh, so all we have to do is just sprinkle them onto the sticky tab and that will hold them nice and secure when we transfer them into the scanning electron microscope. And I've already put the sample with our material from the Avro leg in the microscope and fired it up and now we should hopefully be able to find out very quickly what elements it's made out of. That looks promising. So that looks like a, a scraping of metal and this scale bar is 200 microns so that is a fifth of a millimeter across this little bit of metal and this area looks like it's quite even and will be facing the detector so I'm hoping for a good signal. So I'm going to tell the system that I only want to be putting the, the beam of electrons on this area so I don't pick up a lot of signal from the carbon tab. And we've got our element counts coming up very quickly. So lots of aluminium, which we expected, and we're also getting zinc, magnesium, and unsurprisingly, as it's metal that's met the atmosphere, some of it's oxidised. This is mostly aluminium, zinc and magnesium and the ratios of those show that it's very similar to the aerospace aluminiums they used from the 1940s up to about the 1970s where they developed new uh, compositions of aluminium which were much more resistant to the formation of these cracks. The original challenge was to assess whether the Avro's leg could be safely welded and our task as chemists was to identify the elements within the alloy. While scientific analysis can suggest what is there the decision of how to repair it is in the hands of, well, now better informed engineers. More intriguingly, this chemical analysis has shown an interesting quirk in the structure of the metal. Does this hint at a reason for the leg's failure? The great thing about scientific investigation is that it sometimes raises more questions than it answers.